Hello and welcome. You're here with Keith at Clint's again. Um, what we're going to do, if you remember uh, last week, we said that we're, we're trying to release a sensor, it's a live sensor like this, which was jammed in the tailstock of the Boxford lathe. And that's because the, the length of the taper shank there wasn't long enough to be ejected by the self-ejecting tailstock. There's a reason for that, which I'll, I'll discuss uh, later with you. But now we're going to uh, attempt to get the, the jump center out of the tailstock without damaging it. Now, my videos all go out live with the recorded live. Um, I, what I mean to say is, if it goes wrong, you see it because I don't edit my videos. So it's just like being live. Um, I'm hoping things don't go wrong. They don't usually, you know. But uh, anyway, we'll have, a, we'll have a look at removing this sensor that got jammed. And then I'll tell you the reasons why it got jammed. Okay. Yeah, sorry for that slight delay. I've just been repositioning your camera. And uh, I paused the video. Uh, to facilitate me moving it, so anyway, I, I, it, it didn't close straight away. So we're back, we're back on on track now. So we'll have a look at this <coughs> self-ejecting tailstock on the Boxford, and there you got, I think, a pretty good view of it. And to eject it, you just turn the turn the hand wheel in uh, the appropriate direction, and it should eject. But this won't, so it's completely jammed in. Um, one of the ways to um, one of the one of the ways to remove it <coughs> would be to dismantle the tailstock, and uh, well, that is to take the uh, the quill out completely and eject it by pushing a rod through and, and hitting it. But it's a bit messy that way. I, th I think we can do it a uh, much quicker way uh, by using uh, a drift, which. Um, <coughs> A, a drift which we would use in pedestal drills for removing taper shank drills. Um, I have I have one here. <coughs> As you see, it's angled. You see, it goes in the quill of a, a machine, milling machine or a or a drill, and the taper it ejects it. So let's have a look. See if we can do it here. What we can do here. And here we are. There's the tail stock, and we're going to try to safely eject. The center without so it's a live center oops we're going to try to remove it without without causing any damage to the machine or the center so first as usual we always put protective cover over the area of the machine bed to protect it when we we can't turn the wheel so we'll lock it into position there. I've turned it now so that the quill is completely retracted so there's hardly anything showing on the quill, uh, just a bevel. And then we've got two surface, a flat surface all the way around there, which we're gonna, we're gonna use to uh, eject it, hopefully. You can see there. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Um, I'm trying to get the best angle so you can see what's happening here. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that might be adequate. Let me test it. Hmm. I'll try it on this side. Yeah. You see, you see the idea of it. We get the flat side to the face of the uh, the face of the tail stop there, but I think I can do it better on this side. So, slide this. What you do is to slide the the drift down like that. I'll do it at this side so you can see what's happening. Like so, 
I'll put it on the other side so I can get to the thing. It's difficult when I'm doing this with a camera. The only need to do is to get it in position, keep it off the uh, machine surfaces of the quill itself, and oh, it doesn't take a lot of effort to remove it. So I'm, I'm supporting it there, and then what I'm going to do is just give it a quick up oh, like that. Doesn't need much, and there it's released. Okay, so there we are. That's that. That's that. Um, it's 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 released. I've got it out. It's undamaged. Uh, the tailstock is okay. The the difference between uh, what it should do with a self-ejecting tailstock. Normally, I would use something like one I've already got. But this is the last job we did was a maintenance job, and the centre, uh, this live centre, wants returning because it's it's badly scored in in there. But this, I'll show you how it how it should operate. Okay, got the tail stuck there. That's in the position. So normally it would eject. Okay, let me see. Yeah. Let's turn that lever there. See me turning it there. I'll support it. Whoa. Coming to the end of the, the turn and, and then it, that's it. So it ejects. See, self ejects. Why didn't the why didn't the other one self eject? Well, the simple reason is this. I have to tell you. Take this out first. I'll put it there. <coughs> this is a British lathe. Okay. Now, normally, over the years, I've used. Uh, British equipment, mainly English, uh, sometimes American parts, because this South Bend lathe that we're looking at, this uh, Boxford lathe, is basically identical to the American South Bend, um, <coughs> which is uh, <coughs> uh, uh, South Bend in America. So in the Tri County area, you've got uh, Ohio, Kentucky, and uh, Indiana. Uh, so uh, that's the, where the South Bend uh, manufacturing company is. So with the American and English um, parts and accessories, uh, for instance this, and I've had one or two of these, I've never, never had one quite like this one, I've had others, but it ejects. Now this one, you'll see, doesn't quite eject because it's its taper is a little bit short, it should be there, but it's, it, it's the taper and that, that bit there. It's not allowing the full travel of the Morse taper because of that radius. There is no radius there, you see. And that's the reason it got stuck. The other reason is why it's being made like that. Why would they make it like that? So it wouldn't eject? Well, <coughs> the simple answer is that this is a Chinese. It's made in China. And it's probably made for Chinese machines. And a lot of Chinese machines, <coughs> they may not, <coughs> in fact some English ones, they may not necessarily have self-ejecting tail stops. So what you would do in that case is to um, not use Chinese, not use Chinese uh, parts. Um, I have observed that there's a screw <coughs> in the bottom of that, which we may be able to adjust to uh, uh, allow for that. Um, but I don't know. I'm reluctant to try it because the screw's there for a reason, and it may be that that screw helps to position that. So I'm reluctant to alter that one. 
with Knoxville centres, uh, there's also a fine thread on that for some other reason, and uh, but it's for Chinese lathes. So as I say, some I've knocked through facilities like on the tailstock, which is not self-ejecting. So you put a rod to tap it and it's release. Whichever way you do it, you just make sure that you've got a bed protector on. Okay. Um, well, I can tell you this is the first time that this has ever happened to me in all the many, many years. And uh, that, that's the reason. So, um, that's that. Whoops. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Um, that concludes this, this video. Um, there, is a, there is a chuck I've mounted on there because it's, I was looking at an alternative method to, to um, I was going to leave it in the chuck but decided against it. Um, we, on the last video we took a, we took a collet chuck off um, out of the headstock and I just replaced it by that. For those of you who've missed one or two of my videos, there will be a video and um, it's how to mount a, a, a chuck in the, in the sensor lathe. Check it out and then you can have a look at it. So until then, give us a like if you like the video and see you next time. Bye.